a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. James Wan James Wan is an Australian film director, screenwriter and producer. Wan is known for directing the horror film Saw and creating Billy the Puppet. He also directed Dead Silence and Death Sentence, Insidious. The Conjuring and Insidious, Chapter 2, Furious 7, The Conjuring 2 and the upcoming Aquaman. Early Life Wan was born in Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia and is of Malaysian Chinese descent. Wan and his family moved to Perth, Australia when he was seven. He attended Lake Tuggeranong College in Canberra. Before moving to Perth as an adult, Wan relocated from Perth to Melbourne, where he attended Mid University. 2000-2006, debut Before his success in the mainstream film industry, he made his first feature-length film, Stygian, with Shannon Young, which won Best Guerrilla Film at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival in 2000. Prior to 2003, Wan and his friend, Screenwriter Lee Winnell had begun writing a script based for a horror film, citing inspiration from their dreams and fears. Upon completing the script, Lee and James had wanted to select an excerpt from their script, later to be known as Saw and film it to pitch their film to studios. With the help of Charlie Clauser, who had composed the score for the film, and a few stand-in actors, Lee and James shot the film with relatively no budget. Leah decided to star in the film as well. After the release of the full-length Saw, the film was met with overwhelming success in the box office both domestically and internationally. The film ended up grossing $55 million in America, and $48 million in other countries, totaling over $103 million US dollars worldwide. This was over $100 million profit, over 80 times the production budget. This led the studio to greenlight the sequel Saw 2, and later the rest of the Saw franchise based on the yearly success of the previous installment. Since its inception, Saw has become the highest grossing horror franchise of all time worldwide in unadjusted dollars. In the United States only, Saw is the second highest grossing horror franchise, behind only the Friday the 13th films by a margin of $10 million. Since creating the franchise, one and Lee Winnell have served as executive producers to the sequels Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw V, Saw Vi, Saw 3D and the recent Jigsaw. The release of Saw 3D, complete with its subtitle, was to signify the completion of the franchise. However, Costas Mandalore, an actor in the seventh installment, revealed that multiple endings to the film had been shot and the series could continue depending on which was used. The sixth sequel continued the profit margin performance of the original film and earned 136 million US dollars in the global market, against a production budget of 20 million US dollars. In August 2012, various online horror publications stated that a source at Lionsgate, the franchise's production company, had revealed intentions for an eighth Saw sequel, but it was a day tinkering stage at the time of the disclosure. 2007-2009, Setback In 2007, Wan directed two feature films. The first was the horror film Dead Silence, which was the result of advice from Wan and Wan's agent at the time. Winnell has since stated that the film was a negative experience for him. It all started when James and I returned from the Sundance Film Festival, where we had screened Saw to much success. Our representatives promptly told us that we should get another deal for a film stitched up before it was released. It was presented as a kind of insurance if Saw was a flop, we had another film to fall back on. Seems logical. There was only one problem I didn't have any ideas for a new film. I had barely been able to catch my breath throughout the whole Saw experience, let alone dream up another film idea. Instead of telling our representatives that they had to wait until I came up with an idea I really liked though, I locked myself in the bedroom of the crappy apartment we had rented in Hollywood, and tried to force an idea out like a particularly stubborn hangover shit. It was creativity at gunpoint. 
If I could go back in time, I would politely tell everyone to go fuck themselves, but back then dot no. I paced and paced and even took up smoking for a while. So stressed out was I Dead Silence featured Australian actor Ryan Quanton, and is based on the premise of a legend, whereby the ghost of a ventriloquist, Mary Shaw, removes the tongue of any person who screams in its presence. Rather than a gore movie, one described the film as, a creepy doll movie. It's in the spirit of those old Twilight Zone episodes or Hammer Horror films. Very old school. One second directorial film of 2007 was Death Sentence, a film adapted from the Brian Garfield novel of the same name that was written as the sequel to Death Wish. The film's protagonist is played by Kevin Bacon and has no connection to the horror genre. Instead, Bacon stars as a father who seeks revenge for his murdered son, who is killed by a local gang. Winnell features as a minor character in the film, playing one of the gang members who is eventually killed by Bacon's character. One described the film as, a raw and gritty, 70s-styled revenge thriller. It's my art house movie with guns. Having worked on his previous three films continuously, one told Crave Online that he was ready for, a bit of time off just to chill. But at the same time I'm using this opportunity to write again, following the completion of Death Sentence. In 2008, one directed a trailer for the survival horror video game Dead Space. 2010-2013, Resurgence. Next, one directed the horror film Insidious, which premiered at the 2010 Toronto International Film Festival as part of the Midnight Madness program and was sold to Sony Pictures worldwide for a seven-figure sum within four hours of the premiere's conclusion. The film began its American theatrical release in the first weekend of April 2011, and achieved third place at the box office, with an estimated 13.5 million US dollars in ticket sales. Starring Patrick Wilson, Rose Byrne, and Barbara Hershey, the film was made independently. As one sought complete creative control and also wanted to make a film that was markedly different from the gore that he had become synonymous with due to Saw, one stated in an interview. The fact that Insidious was not being run by a committee really afforded me the luxury to make a film with lots of creepy, bizarre moments that a studio might not get, both one and Wannell stated that they wanted to use techniques such as restraint and silence to create a horror film, similar to The Sixth Sense the others in David Lynch's films. Following the release of Insidious, one revealed in an interview, in regard to his career, I definitely do want to experiment in other genres, or make films in other genres, because I love, Lee and I have, we're not just horror fans, we're film fans. I love action films, I want to do action films, I want to do romantic comedies, I love all this stuff. So, if I find the good material, I'll do it. On the 13th of November 2012, news emerged of Wan's ongoing negotiations to direct an adaption of the 1980s television series MacGyver. Wan posted on his Twitter account, People are surprised? You guys never saw Shades of Mag and Jigsaw. In response to public comments regarding the news, the screenplay is complete and the series creator, Lise Lotov, is also involved. However, the film never materialized and instead, a reboot television series titled MacGyver, premiered in September 2016. One executive produces the series and directed the pilot episode. The horror film news website Bloody Disgusting confirmed Wan's directorial involvement with a film entitled The Warren Files. The film, later retitled The Conjuring, centered on the real-life exploits of Ed and Lorraine Warren, a married couple that investigated paranormal events. The film focused on the couple's most famous case second to the Amityville haunting, in which they investigated a witch's curse on a Rhode Island family farm. In his second collaboration with the pair, Patrick Wilson featured in the film, and he and actress Vera Farmiga played paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, respectively. Filming commenced in North Carolina, United States in late February 2012, and New Line Cinema, together with Warner Brothers Pictures, had initially slated the film for a release on 25 January 2013. 
A test screening of the film occurred in October 2012 at the New York Comic Con event, where it screened in the IGN theater. And the audience feedback was overwhelmingly positive. At that stage, one had several more weeks before the film was completed. The film was released in July 2013, and has received acclaim from critics and audiences alike. After work on The Conjuring was complete, one directed a sequel to 2010's Insidious. The film was once again written by Wan's longtime collaborator and close friend, Wanel, and the cast of the original film returned. Filming for the sequel commenced in January 2013, and the film was released on 13 September 2013. The budget for the film had been described as, shoestring, by one media outlet, Owen Pelly. The creator of the Paranormal Activity franchise, returned as an executive producer. Film District distributed Insidious, Chapter 2. One stated in an interview following a test screening of The Conjuring, I think the sequel to Insidious is kind of my reaction to Saw, where for my own reason I wasn't as involved in the sequels. And so I felt with Insidious, I think it would be good to shepherd it and keep it more in track to the version I had when I made the first film so that it doesn't detour too far. So yeah. I'm kind of working with Lee, Winnell, on the story and the script. I never set out to make sequels to any of my films I direct, one further explained. If they happen, that's great. Because that means people out there love it and they want more of it. But I always felt with Insidious we created this really interesting world that we can explore more. And so even though we didn't set out to make a sequel, I felt that there are stories still out there that could be told. 2014 Present, Transformation In early 2013, one entered into negotiations with Universal Pictures to direct the seventh installment of the Fast and the Furious action franchise after Justin Lin who directed the previous four sequels, confirmed that he would not continue as director in January 2013. One was part of a directorial shortlist alongside Jeff Woodlow, Baltasar Kormaupur, and Harold Zwart. A final confirmation that one would direct was revealed in April 2013, with Lynn being quoted, It's time for me to move on to other things and I'm thrilled that Universal and Neil have selected James Wan to lead the franchise into its new chapter. The film, Furious 7, was released in April 2015. It became the most successful film in terms of box office revenues and critics' reviews in the Fast and Furious franchise. On 20 October 2014, Gary Maddox at the Sydney Morning Herald announced that Wan had agreed to direct The Conjuring 2 as part of a significant long-term deal with New Line Cinema. Head of New Line, Toby Emmerich, explained that one is the sole director that the studio signed a deal with, as New Line considers one to be, a class of one. The film was released on 10 June 2016, to high critical acclaim and commercial success. On 21 October 2014, one had launched his own production company, Atomic Monster Productions, at New Line Cinema. With the company, he develops and produces budget films in the science fiction, horror, and comedy genres. The films produced by the label include The Conjuring 2 and Lights Out. One also produced Demonic, a Dimension Films horror movie that was scheduled for a December 2014 release, alongside Lee Clay. One conceived of the idea for the film, which was directed by Will Cannon and features Maria Bello in the lead role. Max Larbella penned the script. The film was eventually released on VOD in August 2017. One then served as a producer on Annabelle, a spin-off of The Conjuring that served as a prequel to the 2013 film. The spin-off was profitable for the New Lion Film Production Company, as it was made for a cost of $6.5 million and had grossed over $256 million worldwide since it was publicly launched on 3 October 2014. He also produced the prequel film Annabelle, Creation, which was released in 2017. 1. And Gary Doberman co-wrote the story of the Conjuring spin-off horror film The Nun, which one also produced, and which was released on 7 September 2018, in June 2015. It was announced that one will direct the upcoming film Aquaman, 
The film is slated for release on 21 December 2018 as the sixth installment of the DC Extended Universe. Future Projects In June 2014, 20th Century Fox acquired the rights to Wan's graphic novel Malignant Man. According to reports, Wan was to develop the concept with a view to directing and producing the film. As of the time of the announcement, comic book label Boom Studios is slated for a production role alongside co-producers Stephen Christie, Ross Ritchie, and Adam Yoelin, in June 2016. The Hollywood Reporter reported that Brad Payton will direct the film. In August 2017, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Rebecca Thomas had now signed on to direct. And the title of the project was confirmed to be Malignant. On 7 August 2015, it was reported that one had signed on to produce New Line Cinema's Mortal Kombat reboot. In March 2018, The Hollywood Reporter reported that one and producers Roy Lee and Larry Sanitsky were developing a film adaptation of the Stephen King novel The Tommyknockers and shopping the package to studios. On 20 April 2018, Deadline reported that Universal had won the bidding war and acquired the feature film package. One will produce the film adaptation under his Atomic Monster label, with an eye to direct. In May 2018, it was announced that One would be developing a television series based on the character Swamp Thing, to debut in 2019 on the DC Universe streaming service. Unrealized Projects In 2009, a Wano One collaborative project, called X-Ray, was announced and was described as a new Film noir slash action project, with producer Robbie Brenner also attached to the project. However, as of December 2012, no further developments were reported. It was also announced that an adaptation of Scott O'Brown graphic novel Nightfall was to be Wan's next film after death sentence. The plot involves the events that take place after a criminal is sent to a Texas prison run by vampires. However, nothing materialized and one lost the rights to the film. In 2012, Disney was reported to be developing a remake of The Rocketeer, and one was in talks about directing the film. However, no film ever came to fruition. One was also at one point attached to the director role for a live-action Robotech film for Sony, but was replaced by Andy Muschietti in July 2017. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like